Ah, funerals. Perhaps the most poignant events we can ever attend. A time to reflect on the good in the heart of the dearly departed, and on the good deeds that they achieved during their lives. Now, you all know exactly what kind of stories I like to read, so you can probably guess that tonight's tale doesn't exactly go along those lines. Well, my dear friends, it's Monday again already, so let me ease you into the start of the week with a deliciously evil little story. Now, you know what to do. Sit back and relax with your favorite drink, because now it's time to listen. Nearly nodding off, I sat listening to the illustrious Reverend Rob Dietz as he entered into the second hour of his sermon. My ass began to hurt from the century-old hardwood pew. I tried to shift to a more comfortable spot, but was wedged between the shoulders of two large old men. I looked around at the two hundred members of a rural community crammed into the small church. All, including myself had shown up to pay last respects to one Mrs. Lorraine Gilbert, a 62-year-old mother of 12 that had devoted herself to family, community, and church. Ah, a true righteous pillar of the community. Being her youngest child, my attendance had been a forced courtesy. My stepfather decided that the funeral would be held in the community, and the church he and my mother had grown up in. So, I sat there, shoulder to shoulder with family members that still only knew me as Freddy's wife's daughter, listening to the Reverend Dietz, along with many, many others, paying homage to the much-respected, God-fearing, family-loving woman. After almost four hours, I felt as though they'd had plenty. As Reverend Dietz began to sing this little light of mine, his fifth song. One of the old ladies in the front row with a large bun on her head and a long skirt covering her ankles bolted upright in the standing position. Her body solidified as her fists clenched from the power of the Lord coursing through her veins. Oh, she held her hands up high. Words of unknown origin rolled off her tongue. And then she dropped to her knees and bowed her head low. Several other old ladies, with similar buns and skirts, joined her. They kneeled in front of the casket, palms pointed upward. Reverend Dietz's voice rose until it shook the windows, and he began to sweat profusely, one hand raised to the heavens. I began to shift in my seat. Not being of this faith, or even being a regular churchgoer, I'd never witnessed a person going under the power. Unfortunately, my fellow attendees were very familiar with this practice and joined the line of old ladies, each and every one of them being struck with the love of the Lord. Soon, I was the only one in my seat. Bodies covered the floor, prostrated before the altar, singing, praying, speaking in tongues. Reverend Dietz was screaming at the top of his lungs, praising my mother for her devotion to the church and the Almighty above. He raised both hands in the air as the entire spectacle crescendoed to a fever pitch. I needed to leave, to get away from the perceived madness that had begun to unfold. If I'd had the courage to leave, well, I couldn't have done so without stepping on people. So... I sat, wild-eyed and slack-jawed. Pain emanated from the white knuckles and breaking fingernails from the grip I had on the edge of the pew. Every muscle tightened up. My heart raced. I was scared. Just when I decided that I didn't care who I had to trample on in order to get out of that damn church, my eyes fell upon the reverend. He had stopped screaming. He stood still, hands still in the air. 
He looked as though he'd just been struck by lightning. His face contorted into ghastly forms. His body shuddered. His eyes rolled into the back of his head. Thinking this was part of the show, I stood up, planning my escape route. Suddenly, the Reverend dropped his hands to his sides and surveyed the congregation. He patiently waited for the power and love of God to leave his parishioners. One by one, they returned to the earthly plane quietly got up off the floor and returned to their seats. I sat down as well, full of confusion and fear. I mentally cursed my mother for marrying my stepfather, then cursed my stepfather for dragging me to this crazy filled horror ride. Thinking the orgy of devotion was over, I relaxed my grip on the pew. Reverend Dietz looked across the silent church and a smile slithered across his face. He resumed his sermon as though nothing had happened. As he spoke, his words took on an ominous tone, and a low growl began to well up from his throat. The more he spoke of the Lord, the more agitated he became. His face turned red, his mouth frothed, and sweat rolled down his forehead. He stomped over to the casket, and kicked it over. Bitch. Lying, godless whore. He screamed. My mother's body flopped out of the casket as it hit the floor. The crowd gasped. Some screamed. One of the old ladies fainted. Her large hair bun cushioning her head from the floor. My stepfather and my brothers raged towards the altar. Sit, Sit down. down. Sit the fuck down, screamed the reverend. His face had now contorted into what looked like an old funhouse devil mask. His teeth gnashed. He pointed a now gnarled finger at the men. In a calm tone, he repeated, Sit the fuck down. The men stopped in their tracks. I don't know if it was fear or mind control, that made them obey without questions. As they quietly returned to their seats, I was now convinced this was not part of the service and started my escape once again. Murmurs and whispering filled the room and people started to squirm uncomfortably. All of you, shut your fucking mouths. Someone get that old bitch off the floor. People sat stunned eyes wide in terror. Some had their heads down in silent prayer. Others stared with hate and anger. Someone finally woke up the old lady who'd collapsed on the floor, helping her to a pew. Reverend Dietz stood tall at the podium. Now, I'm sure there is <laughs> some confusion as to my behavior. Well, I'll tell you. The Lord has filled me with his power and love. He has seen fit to let me see into the hearts of each and every one of you. Even the late Mrs. Gilbert. God rest her soul. He motioned to the corpse splayed out on the floor. Reverend Dietz surveyed the crowd, making eye contact with individuals as he read their internal dialogue. When his eyes met mine, a slight look of confusion came to his eyes. He stared at me. I looked back into his soul. He continued his monologuing. Not one of you can call yourselves Christian. I see adulterers, thieves, rapists and gossips. I see blackness, envy, hatred and lust in your hearts. You are all guilty of some sin. Some guilty of all of them. He pointed a gnarled finger at me. His eyes narrowed into slits. You. You are one of the chosen. You are the only one deemed worthy. Lord be praised. I shrunk down in embarrassment. The congregation looked at me with daggers of hate in their eyes. Now, Mrs. Gilbert here was not the pillar of righteousness you all claim her to be. No. Mrs. Gilbert had secrets. 
One was her being a prescription junkie. Just because Dr. Drug said it was okay, she was no better than addicts in the park with needles hanging out of their arms. Her beloved painkillers and sleep aids are the reason we are all here today. <laughs> you all thought it was just a car crash. He looked at me directly as he said this. Whispers crept across the congregation. Reverend Dietz swept his arms through the air. She had several more secrets. Twelve of them to be exact. You see, out of all Mrs. Gilbert's children, not one of them were fathered by Mr. Hafford, her first husband. Poor Mr. Hafford. Didn't know he was shooting blanks until the day he died. Now, Many another husband has had lovely Bible studies with dear, dear Mrs. Gilbert. Even after she stole Mr. Gilbert, who adopted and raised her many children, she continued to screw your husbands. More murmurs and whispers from the crowd. A sneer crossed the Reverend's face. Ah, this must be good news to you, Sister Claire. All these years... Wondering if your baby boys belong to your husband or to Mr. Hafford. That's why you spread all those vicious rumors about their daughter. You didn't want your sweet boy marrying his half-sister. A few people stood up and headed for the door, not wanting their secrets to be revealed. Some kept their heads down in prayer, some in shame. I kept my eyes on the reverend. Where do you think you're going? No one leaves, not until judgment has been passed. He scolded the congregation. He then turned his head and looked straight at me. Once again I shrunk down in my seat, not wanting to be singled out again. He hopped down from the podium, walking through the aisles. He berated and belittled each and every parishioner until every little secret and lie was brought to light even though their soft underbelly of deceit had been exposed. Every one stayed quiet in their seats. Some even looked relieved to be finally outed. Many hung their heads in prayer. I was still disturbed by their lack of anger. Sheep waiting for the slaughter, I thought, when the secrets of the last lamb was revealed. He stopped at me. Why are you here? He asked. I smiled politely, eyebrow raised. To pay my respects, of course. Child, no one here deserves your respect. They all deserve to be damned to hell. He narrowed his eyes and tilted his head in acknowledgement. But you knew that already, didn't you? It doesn't matter what I know. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here for the show. I smiled, warm and sweet. <laughs> Judgment is exactly what you're here for. He let out a low chuckle. I stood up and met his gaze. As I looked into his soul, I asked, Had any good prayer sessions lately, Reverend Dietz? Hmm, just yesterday, he said nonchalantly. Ah, oh, she was a sweet little thing. His face contorted from devilish to confused to shame. He stammered. Ah, uh, uh, I've never touched a child. Never touched a child. He was aware of his confession, but unable to comprehend why the words had come out of his mouth. He began to back towards the altar. I followed. As we made our way back up to the podium, I dismissed the good reverend with, Thank you, Reverend Dietz. You have done your job perfectly. You may now take your seat with the rest of the lambs. The reverend sat down in a deacon's chair, hanging his head in shame. I turned to address the congregation. Bible in one hand, the other held out over the congregation. Channeling Charlton Heston as Moses, I spoke loudly. I instantly knew why preachers preach this way. It was fun. Ah, 
I guess it's time for our closing prayer. Brothers and sisters, children of God, we have gathered here to celebrate our love for the Lord and Sister Lorraine. I motion to the corpse splayed out on the floor. Thanks to the beautiful testimony by Reverend Dietz, all of your sins have been put out to be judged, and judged they have been. Each and every one of you has been deemed unworthy in the eyes of the Lord. But, but in his mercy, he will pass swift and just punishment on you all. Panic started to set in. A low roar rolled through the aisles. The people dropped to their knees. Prayers rolled off the lips of every single individual. And yet, they stayed put. They never tried to leave or attack. Was it the same influence Reverend Dietz had over the angry sons? I still think it was truly a miracle how they never once confronted each other or themselves the entire time. I strolled down the podium steps and towards the main doors. Hatred, confusion, and fear filled the eyes of many as I made it to the exit. Damn sorry fools didn't learn a thing. As I opened the door, I turned for one last announcement. You have all lived your lives in sin, yet only now you pray for forgiveness. Well, your prayers have been denied. I let the door close behind me as I left. I could hear the clamor of feet and bodies, men and women screaming, trying to escape. I took a few steps into the yard, turned back towards the small church and said, Lord, I have done your bidding. The rest is up to you. I walked to my car, lit up a cigarette and looked back at the small church. I could still hear screams and fists banging on the doors and windows. Lightning rained down from a clear blue sky and the screams died out as the building glowed brightly. The smell of electricity and burned flesh filled the air. The news called it a tragedy full of sorrow. 218 members of a small religious community electrocuted all at once while attending a funeral for one of their most beloved and respected members. Even the corpse had been knocked over from the force. Why such a misfortune would befall a God-fearing, hard-working community was beyond comprehension. Yet no one could explain how they were fried like little white grains of rice. It was a beautiful day for a funeral. Not a cloud in the sky. Lightning would never have caused so much destruction. Must have been rats chewing on the wires. Or some type of conductive material used in the carpeting. I was interviewed as the sole survivor. Saved only because I'd been an outsider that just couldn't bear witness to such a show of emotion, devotion, and love for the Lord. I'd been out getting some air when the tragedy took place. I was now an orphan, without a, if you'll excuse the phrase, soul in the world. I had survivor's guilt, PTSD, grief-stricken over the loss of my entire family and adopted community. I made every major news network. Ellen, Dr. Phil, even Murray took DNA tests to find out if my father was really my father. He wasn't. I don't know how he did it, but apparently he got the DNA from every dead man in the church. My real father was Reverend Dietz. <laughs> yeah, I still chuckle at that little tidbit of information. Well, give me my Oscar right now. I played the part so well. Donations are still rolling in. Even a new car and a free ride to college. As I sit in my beautiful new house, with a very large inheritance, being the last living member of a large family certainly has its rewards, I thank my Lord. He now has 218 new souls to torment with fire and brimstone in the pits of hell. And I have received my just rewards.
Well, that was a nasty little one, wasn't it? To start off the week as well. Oh, can you imagine what I've got in store for you on Wednesday? <laughs> well, even I don't yet, so let's wait and see. Well, that's all for me for tonight. I'll be back again really soon. I hope you'll join me one more time. For now, bye-bye.